Thanks for joining. If you have a question as usual, please just use the raise hand function through Zoom and we'll get started here. We'll kick it off with Mike Giver. Hi, Jay. Uh, when a kid like, when a kid is humble and uh, genuine as uh, Dan Vladar goes up like he did the other night and, and has a debut like that, uh, that must be a, uh, that must give you and your staff a lot of satisfaction uh, that after working with him. What were your, what were your thoughts on his performance that night? Uh, sorry, I, I, I had it and I'm, <laughs> my speakers weren't working. You're talking about Vladar, right? Yeah. Uh, what a tough day today with, with computers. I don't know what, you know what you guys know when that, that, happens, <laughs> that, that happens from time to time. It's yeah. a, um, Vladdy, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, well, what comes to mind, I think when I when I watched him play, and I can't speak for the other guys, but I think about his journey. I mean, he 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 came over here when he was 18, you know, from Czech and played in Chicago of the, the in the USHL. Really, and I think it was really at the beginning stages of Chicago's team, if I'm not mistaken. It, it wasn't like it is now. Um, and so, you know, I give him a lot of credit for that. That's, that's 18 years old. I mean, I went to Germany when I was uh, 35. I coached over there for a year and, and it was really hard. It, it was a real, really a challenging thing for me to, to be away for that long. And so for a kid like that to come over at 18 and, and do that is, is impressive. And I think that's probably why you got the, the reaction that that you saw out of him, you know, he, he's been at it for a long, long time. And that was his dream. His dream was to play in the NHL and get a win. And, and you saw it. So, um, you know, for us, it was thrilling. It was, it was probably like a lot of people, but, you know, having known him personally, and I also know how hard the guys work for him, how hard they play for him, how, you know, they know what he does every night and, and how he competes and, and uh, you know, to the last, uh, you know, second of the game. And you saw that with that save in the, in the first there. I mean, that's vintage Vladdy. And, and then I think it's also vintage Vladdy to come out and say, uh, you know, just point blank, that was luck, you know, and it's, it's, it's luck, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not luck because the kid I've seen him do that before, you know, I I've seen him never give up on a, on a, on a shot before. And I've seen him do all those sorts of things. So Yes, was there a little luck involved? There was, but there wouldn't have been any luck involved if it wasn't for Vladdy's um, determination to really, uh, you know, make every possible save he could. In your last two games, it seems like there's been uh, some bad blood between the teams. A uh, couple of fights, both uh, in both games. We're only halfway through the season with playing the same team. Do you? Uh, do you think that's why uh, why that's happening? It's getting a little heated. Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's just it's natural, you know. I mean, you see that with playoff series. You're even seeing that. I don't know the exact stat, but we read some stat the other day about the amount of fights in the NHL up to this point this year compared to last year, and it's it's I, it's not doubled, but it's um, you know it's significantly more. And I think it's just because you're playing teams um you know repetitively or repeatedly over and over again and you just you just you get ticked off for playing against the same teams um and i think you combine that with uh we have some players on our team that play a certain way that probably get under people's skin and i think uh both hartford and bridgeport have the same um and so that combination is just it's just naturally going to uh going to lead to, uh, you know, some confrontations and, and uh, some, some bad blood, but uh, you know what, it's, it's better than, uh, you know, uh, 13 games or, you know, 26 games of, of just blah, you know, of like where it's just, it, it turns into nothing. There's some emotion there. It's, it's good. You know, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's good to see. I think guys will be, uh, you know, excited to play on Saturday. Last one uh, for me. You got a stretch here of, I think, three games in two weeks. Um, a lot of downtime. Are you, are you doing anything different uh, over this next little stretch? Well, we're going to, we're going to, I mean, we had a skills day today with Kimmer. And, um, 
you know, it, it's on us to, to try to have a very constructive, uh, you know, set of practice days that probably will be a little bit more uh, skill heavy uh, to really polish that up because we have the time to do so. Um, but at the same time, you know, hopefully find that balance that we're not losing our edge uh, so that we're not ready to go on Saturday. So it's, it's always a fine line, but uh, like you said, there's a long stretch of, of, you know, compared to what we just went through of, of not playing the game. So, um, you know, we're going to do our best to develop, uh, develop skills and, and uh, take advantage of this time period here that we have uh, really from here to the end of the season, frankly, um, where, it, where it does lighten up. It's not as, not as heavy as it was. Um, so we'll find that balance, but yeah, it'll just be a little bit more of, uh, of a college like, uh, uh, you know, practice schedule as opposed to uh, where you're playing every other day. Thanks Jay. Okay, bye. We'll go over to Pluto Shinzawa. Uh, we okay. saw McKinnon on, on Monday. We saw Lyle stick up for Lauco. Um, so you have that, but in general, uh, it, it certainly looks like it, the, the league is not as, as heated as it was in years past. I'm, I'm sure you played with and against some really tough guys. Sure. So uh, how, how does that leave you, Jay? Um, that, yes, players have to enter the league more well-rounded in their games, but then you also might lose that element of, of guys who are, who are good teammates and are good for the room, and they, are, they get sifted out of the league. So how do you feel about that? With the tough guys, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe because I was one of those players that uh, from time to time had to have to had to fight, you know, in the kind of fabricated way where, uh, you know, someone asked me to fight and I'm going to give them that fight and that's the way it is or vice versa. And, you know, and it's it's not as emotional as it as as some, as you're seeing now, it's, it's a little bit more, I don't want to say staged, but there, and there's certainly an aspect to it that was effective, but it, it was different. Um, I, I personally don't miss that. Um, I just know as a player, it was a real challenge to play like that, uh, to, you know, uh, ask yourself or someone else to, to do that literally with no real emotion. Um, so I don't miss that. Um, but to your point, uh, usually players like that are, are the heart and soul of the team uh, and, um, you know, are certainly guys I, to this day, am good friends with. Um, and so you're right. There's a little bit of that element lost uh, as a big brother type thing. I, I do still think it exists. I mean, I, I, I think Trent Frederick was a big brother to the majority and he's, you're seeing it now in Boston. He, he was um, that, that was the role he kind of, uh, I wouldn't say he took on, but he kind of learned and it was, a, and it's been effective for him, you know? And I think if you ask players in, on the Bruins now, they, they know Freddie's got their back, you know, that's, and so, um, when you walk in the rink, uh, uh at, in the morning and you see Fred, it gives you a pretty nice feeling. It really does. Uh, and so I think it's still there. I think, I think to your point, it's not as prevalent for sure there's there aren't you know I, I think when I was playing here we had Brendan Walsh and Colton Orr and Brent Thompson um and Jay Henderson and and I'm sure I'm missing a guy or two you know and so that that's a, a different game and and that that did um provide an environment that was uh, pretty nice to be around you know, that, that, that we all kind of knew this is how it is. Everyone treats each other the right way. And that, that's how it is. Um, I still think that exists here. I just think it's just different, you know, mm -hmm. it's different. but that's this life. You know, I, I still think if you were to come into our room now, Fluto, and, and see how our guys treat one another, it's, they're still doing the same stuff. It's just not, it's not the same. So I, I think you're, you're on to that. Uh, or I think you, I agree with you that there, that those guys are missed. Uh, but I also think that, that there are still some guys that will continue to be around that, that still provide that element. We'll go over to Patrick Williams. Yeah, Jay, uh, just to sort of piggyback on that. Uh, how are players different? Uh, what is the mentality like from maybe 15 years ago? Um, 
Because you hear you hear that about players that they are different now. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm probably not the first to say it. I think the the one area I think that they're different is that, um, you know, and I sound cliche saying this. They want to know why. They want to know why why we're doing something. They want to know why, uh, you know, we're working on this skill. They want to know why, um, you know, we're doing that. For me, I I like that. It means they're invested. Uh, you know, it, it provides an avenue for them to take on something that is like their own. That's I'm going to do this because this is this is going to be part of my game. Um, but but you also have to get used to explaining yourself and and having, um, you know, I share data with my team on whether it's systems or why we practice this a lot. Well, I practice this a lot because I've uh done some homework on how goals are scored. And so this is how I think we should practice it. And, and I would encourage feedback from that, but I do find that that is something players want. Um, they don't want to know everything, but they certainly want to know more than when I was playing and a coach just said, you're going to do that. And I would say, okay, I'm going to do that. Cause I knew if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be playing anymore. You know? And so it, it was a little bit different then. Uh, now it's uh, there's a little bit more sell involved. I also think there's a little bit more uh, buy-in uh, when you are able to to do that. So um, evolution, it's just what it is. And uh, you know, speaking of evolution, uh, maybe when all this uh, pandemic mess is over, are there going to be anything that you take from this? Maybe you know, techniques, the, the Zoom calls, whatever the case may be uh forward with you that we do uh, as a yeah. staff, um zoom calls are tough you know like I, I, they're just there's i really enjoyed interaction in my my meetings Fudo saw a presentation i did long ago and uh it was all about that so that that's one thing i miss um i think we've we've gotten a lot better at um sharing things like with regards to uh, messaging away from the rank with regards to me sharing videos, me sharing uh, practice plans, uh, schedules, that sort of thing. So we'll certainly adopt that moving forward. Um, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else. Um, the, the biggest thing that I take from it is the challenge it's, it's presented and, and how to, to, I've taken it as a challenge of how to get guys excited to play 26 games against three teams, really two teams in a practice rank and then two away ranks. Um, and you know, how to, how to get them motivated. And so I'm, I'm hoping at the end of it, I can, I can have an answer that will help me move forward uh, in the way that I was able to, to get through to them in, in a tough time. And then my last thing is like in 20 years, I hope I look back and then in 2021 to 2025, I see a huge renaissance that we saw in the roaring twenties and we're all much better off for all of this. So that's what I would say.